2016. Um, this is kind of one of his signature um, artworks because of his use of all these lines. And then we'll talk about these two to the left and right of me in just a minute. Those are his that arrived at the gallery just the other day, which if you saw our stories, I know that you didn't miss that. Uh, we did a little bit of an unboxing, so that was really cool. Okay, we're on. We're on. Brandon, is that you? I think so. Yay, we're all together again. <laughs> How are you? Good, I'm good. How are you? How is everything in LA? I know you've been busy painting in your yurt. Yeah, um, everything's been going well, thanks. How are you guys in Dallas? We're great. We've been pretty busy. We had a bit of a cold spell uh, two weeks ago now, but of course, sure. if you don't like the weather in Texas, just wait five minutes. We're having a beautiful sunny day today, so very lucky. I'm glad you guys are okay. Yeah, we were concerned about you out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's Jen DeSisto. Hi, guys. Hi, Jen. How are you? <laughs> you have to interview Jen. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's the main one we're interviewing today. <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk about, obviously, we're really excited that, you know, we're interviewing you again because it's been a while since our last one. I think that was back in September of 2020. And a lot has changed since then. Um, but, you know, we have two of your new artworks that arrived. Um, in the, on the ground running and polyamethyst number one. And then of course we also have your print, Al Algen. So mm. I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I actually did some research and I found that Al Al Elf Algen is German for 11 eyes. Is there any special meaning as to why you chose that? Because uh, there were 11 eyes in the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Make it simple. Right. Being a language that I don't speak, I only, I wish I spoke the language. Yeah, I, I, get, I have the basics. I can say hello, goodbye, uh, please, and 11 eyes now. Well, that's all you really need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, also, the use of eyes, it's kind of been a common theme in your artwork. And then in the two new ones that we have in the gallery, those also have eyes in them. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about Maybe why you chose that? Hmm. You? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of reasons, I suppose, why uh, eyes are finding their way continually into my paintings. Um, both open eyes, but also closed eyes. I, I love to paint uh, people in kind of contemplative states. So a lot of the more figurative work, you'll notice that someone is either closing one eye or covering one eye or closing both eyes, and then there are sort of disembodied eyes around them as witnesses, so to speak. Um, and uh, I'm still kind of in the process of understanding what I'm doing as well. So it's fun, <laughs> fun, to, spec <laughs> fun to speculate while you're kind of in process. Um, so, I, But I think that what I'm attempting to capture is um, the kind of uh, uh, the nebulous idea of consciousness and how consciousness um, shows up in certain places, sometimes more than others, and consciousness as it pertains to um, human experience and also within human experience, uh, the ever-present witness, because there is always sort of a witness, spiritually speaking. And so the eyes are kind of a way of alluding to um, the witness, whether it's the person that's being painted, um, who's turning inward and a different set of eyes are opening perhaps, or um, maybe they are being seen um, from a different set of eyes that they're not aware of, or that you could also get into more of like a uh, culturally paranoid part of it and, and maybe more kind of idea where there's always somebody watching that type of thing, but I don't spend too much time there. <laughs> Well, I really like that. That sounds very interesting. Um, oh, somebody did ask if your art has changed since COVID. Oh, has your art changed since COVID? And if so, how? That's a really good question. Um, I would say yes. And I would say yes, it's definitely changed. The ways in which it's 
changing, I say the art is changing, um, are still kind of revealing themselves to me. Um, I've been writing an album while I've been painting oh, wow. here and the, the album is almost finished. And uh, now that I'm having this chance to kind of step back from the lyrics uh, a little bit and kind of get a sense of what my kind of unconscious upwellings were, were doing while I was writing these songs, um, there, uh, there are tinges of, of sort of deep loneliness and deep longing. I think there's probably obvious reasons for that type of a thing because it was such a strange, yeah. kind of isolated in so many ways. Um, there's also uh, kind of a longing for um, touch, like actual cool physical connection. So much of that was lost. Oh, absolutely, yes. And that kind of um, longing, such a, you know, sort of just base human need to be touched by another human being or just to hug your friends or hug your family or your loved um, So much of that was lost over the last year. Fortunately, it's only temporary. So there was also like, there's been tinges of hope interjected in amongst yes. them. Well, so um, as far as like the, the visual aspects of what has changed, um, there are a lot more of those eyes popping up, which I think has something to do with the fact that the last year was so deeply contemplative um, and not necessarily because I wanted it to be that way. It just kind of ended up that way. I um, mostly just, oh, actually not mostly, I entirely just stayed home and I, in a lot of ways, so blessed to, to be in a position where I was able to do that, to stay home and, um, you know, stay safe. And so my, my, my bubble, as far as like, the people who I was interacting with was really, really small. Um, and so I suppose a reason that a bunch of those sort of witnesses or those eyes were popping up in my, in my paintings and stuff is because um, that was all I kind of had. It was a lot of time in dreamland, like almost like a liminal space, you know, yeah. like an in-between state. And so I off in all these different directions, both inward and outward and everywhere I could just to kind of like absorb this strange experience of the last year. How have you fared over the last year? We have fared fairly well-ish. I mean, obviously, you know, being in Texas, it's a very different story, but thankfully, um, we're very lucky to have each other through all of this. And I think, you know, one of the great things about being human is no matter where we are in the world, especially during this time, no matter who we are and where we are, we're all kind of processing this same emotion of going through the last year together and experiencing yeah. that in relatively the same way. And however we choose to express that, that emotion will be conveyed through many forms of art, whether it be music, painting, photography, sculpture, all of that. So it's very special, but in a way sad to share. The universal experience but like you said having those little gleams of hope everywhere is something that keeps us all together just like the great art keeps us all together so very uh, lucky to have the people around us near us what an, it makes that makes me think of uh this past year being as as hard as it was for everybody in the world but you know some people more than others but what an incredible time for art what an incredible uh opportunity exactly. for a our sort of collective experience to be mirrored in both music and visual art and film. And um, I know that people, a lot of like, it, for instance, in the art of movie making, a lot of movies, most movies didn't happen just because they were, there's so many restrictions. Right, they couldn't be there. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my girlfriend went into a very small, very safe COVID bubble and went to, they went, they all had got tested like every three days and they went and they made a, a movie, which um, we're, they're kind of at the last stages of, of editing right now, but I've seen these rough cuts of it and it takes place during COVID, like in the film, it's part of the plot. And oh, wow. it's a fantastic movie. I, I, I can't tell you the title of it, but you guys, will, I'll, I'll definitely be talking about it when it's ready to be talked about because it's definitely worth seeing. Um, but the film beautifully captured and then the other example, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, is um, 
my old friend, Brian Bowen Smith, uh, put out a book called um, Drive-Bys. And he got in his 1950s pickup truck and he drove across the country back and forth, taking pictures of his friends, as well as a bunch of people he just met along the way. Uh, oh, right. That sounds very lovely. <laughs> you should check it out. It's called BBS Drive-Bys. And, I um, bought it. It's amazing. Yes, I, so I have our director, Kristen Rivas, here with me. And she says that she's on that as well. It's so good. He really did a wonderful job of capturing the, the moment, not only the, the strangeness of it and the isolation, but what pokes through in his work more than anything is like there's like the inherent hope and yes. the, of human beings. Um, even amongst one of the most challenging times in, in recent memory. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to um, kind of, we're gonna move the camera over a bit and we're gonna go to your first artwork, um, Polyamethyst number one. Um, and you've done two of these, but one of them is here. And obviously we have the eyes, which we just talked about. But what I really like about this is you have used a different color for the first time, which is more of a pinky hue. Um, and it's very different from your other artworks. I really like it. Is there, you know, what was it like to make this? And was there any reasoning behind choosing a lighter pink color? You know, I don't know if there was real directionality in going with different color palettes. It was more... It's one thing as well, as far as my, my painting is concerned over the last year is that I started to um, knowingly break some of my own patterns. I, I allow certain to come up because they come up, you know, they kind of push through to the surface and um, I would happily just do lines over and over and over. I'm a little bit nuts with that, as indicated by the painting behind you before. Yes, I'm wrong. It's one of my favorite artworks of yours. Thank you. I can go with lines like for the rest of time. There's something really um, hypnotic about it to me and fun. Um, but so I, I really started noticing some of my deeper patterns and wanting to kind of break them. So I started just smearing in different color palettes to see what would happen. And uh, it kind of worked. I, I do enjoy that painting. I also love saying it. Isn't it fun to say polyamethyst? Like it rolls off the tongue well. It does roll off the top well. Polyamethyst. It's a good title. Good title for the artwork. Yeah, I love this. And you, so you can't really see this maybe off if you're on camera and if you're joining us for the interview. Brandon, you know, but it's quite textured, this artwork, which I think, would, I think makes it that much more interesting. Mm, thank you. Yeah, it's fun. It'd be great if people could watch them, but I can recommend it. Because <laughs> it's still... <laughs> <laughs> and you've done this is acrylic watercolor and oil on canvas am i correct yes the oil pastel is kind of the almost crayon looking stuff mm -hmm. and brick reds uh the acrylic is the the black line and the beiges and then um the watercolor are i did the eyes in watercolor and i did them on a separate paper and then kind of um, adhered them to the painting itself to create another layer of, of tactile sensation. So it, you're right, it is very kind of tactile. It's very, it wants to be touched, even though you probably shouldn't touch it. I know, <laughs> you kind of do. It's like the forbidden fruit, can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> he, guard, he guard my ear. Oh my goodness. He's not angry, he just misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little um, bulldog sculpture next to him. <laughs> Do you not see it? Oh, hi. Oh, yeah, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there we are. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay, let's go. Okay, and now we're going to go over to the second artwork, which was also brought to the gallery the other day. And this is On the Ground Running. And again, we have your 
you know, you've used your eyes on them. And this is quite similar to one of your other artworks from your previous series. Um, I think it's Quarks. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, again, I love it when you use, you know, these really bright colors like this beautiful cerulean, and again, you can use the beige. And this is also watercolor, oil, and acrylic on canvas. Yes. And why did you choose On the Ground Running for the title? Um, there's something kind of, uh, there's a movement in this painting. It looks like it, I just stepped back from it when I was sort of finishing it and the thought occurred to me that it looked like it hit the ground running. And so I was like, I should probably call it the ground running <laughs> because it, it, it wanted to move the, the minute I, I started spinning out those lines and stuff. And, um, I suppose this would be a, a really good piece to animate and uh, oh, yes. it really to turn into a, what do they call it? A, an NSFW? Is that the new hot thing? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking the wrong two girls. <laughs> I, I was, that was my attempt at like a dad joke. It, it's, called, <laughs> it's, called, it's called an NFT. If you guys... It, if you don't know what that is yet, oh, you're gonna... like Yeah, the non fungible token. Yes. If you didn't know about it and people didn't know about it, they're gonna yeah. you know, today they're gonna get flooded with this stuff. Yeah. I learned about it on NPR this morning. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I've been jokingly referring to them as NSF because that's a much more fun topic to me. But anyway, yeah. Look great animated. <laughs> <laughs> it is extremely animated. I love it. It almost kind of looks like a wave running over and over each other again. Mm -hmm. And just like uh, polyamorous too, this one is race as well, which um, you wouldn't, for those of you who are joining us, you wouldn't have seen. Um, does anyone have any questions for Brandon or for us that you would like us to answer? Well, uh, somebody wanted to know if you had, Brandon, do you have um, one of the prints that you can show us? Yeah, of course. I'm going to take you guys. I'm already signing all the prints, which is very exciting. I'm almost halfway through signing. <laughs> <laughs> so all the... That way you can see what's going on. Uh, can you see, can you see that? Yes, I can. Oh, they look amazing. So it's, um, the original went, it sold really fast. So I don't actually have it here to show you. Um, but like I was talking about before in this image, the, in the, the figure in the image, her eyes are obscured, which is sort of, once again, alluding to that contemplative state, but she's also in movement, which is kind of fun. And then all of the, the witnesses uh, are these disembodied eyes, which are kind of like these small menacing creatures. And there's 11 of them, so. Um, 11 eyes. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm 70, no, I'm 88. See, you're closer than you think. <laughs> But we're really excited to have them. I mean, they look phenomenal. They looked amazing just to have on. Sorry. <laughs> they look absolutely phenomenal and we're super excited to have them. Um, they are available on our website for those mm. of you who um, are just joining us. Um, but tell us kind of a little bit about, you know, what was your inspiration for doing another print? Are you kind of more in this creative process while you're painting in the yurt? Which it's nice to see the yurt again, by the way. <laughs> the yurt says hi. <laughs> Thanks. I'm seeing a question come up on the bottom and it asked if the print is only available at the gallery and it's available starting today, right? Through you guys? Yeah, so it's on our website now, and if you are on Instagram, the link to our website is in our bio, and then tomorrow it will also be available on your website. Yes, so the first 100 will be available starting now on your guys' website, the second 100 will be available tomorrow, Saturday, on mine, yes. Yes. We did it. Yay. We did it. 
Is there any work that you are working on currently that you might be able to talk about with us a little bit? Um, I just have pieces, which are, oh, and there's someone about to chop something down outside, so that's unfinished as well. Um, no, I have mostly, <laughs> like, old pieces here. Um, there's one gigantic one, which nobody likes but me. You guys want to see it? Yes, we do want to see it. <laughs> Jen, will you hold this so they can see it yeah. with me in yes. scale? Thanks. Don't mind the mess, Jen did it. Yeah, that's my fault. See, look. Nobody likes it but me. So Jen, I get closer. OK. If I'm six feet tall, it's like, what, seven feet tall? Six and a half? It's like, it's pretty big. Wow. Do you see? Jen, can yeah, you go closer a little bit so you can see the detail of the artwork? It's like a glorious mess. <laughs> Well, I like it, so you've got two fans now, including yourself. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. So before we kind of conclude this and sign off, do we have any last minute questions or anything else that you would like to tell us or talk about? Um. Hi, Is people anyone? in my it just said hi from Mallorca, Spain. I've always wanted to go there. I'm so glad everyone's joining us from all over the world. Let's see if there's any questions for us. No, everyone just seems to be really excited about the two new artworks and the print. So, perfect. Um, the only, I did see one question. Um, they wanted to know if you've ever dabbled in anything besides painting, like sculpture. I have, what's the, what's the, the stage before dabbling? I can't even call it dabbling. <laughs> Someone has handed me lumps of clay and I think I've made, I think I made a bong when I was like 14. <laughs> and so I you think may I, have done things with tinfoil. <laughs> yeah, I, I may have created like, like penis sculptures out of clay before, but I wouldn't share them with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> You might have a wide audience who'd want to see it. Never know. You never know. <laughs> You'd have a dick exhibit. Uh, uh, Could be your I, new I, series. I, yeah, exactly. I'm fascinated by sculpture, though, and um, it's something that I would very much like to dabble in one day. Um, when people, but yeah, sculpture fascinates me, so I think it's just a matter of time. Well, that would be very exciting. And yeah. is there kind of any maybe hint on the horizon of you doing a new book? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I suppose that I've been working on my next book since I put out So the Echo in 2014. Was that when it came out? 13. 2013. Oh, my God. It's definitely time. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, working on it. Good. Who's okay, well... Oh, there's another, there's your protege artist in the art. Uh, he's waiting the, for painting direction. Right. He's like, paint me like one of your French dogs. <laughs> okay, everyone. Hi. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for joining us. This was really a lot of fun to interview you again. I hope that soon we can do it in person. Um, but I'm really excited about this new print. Um, super excited for everyone um, to see them online and to receive them in person. They are just phenomenal and super exciting. And then, of course, your two new artworks. Um, a few people have seen them in the gallery today, and they really, really enjoyed them. So looking forward to uh, many more people coming in to Dallas and viewing them. But thank you again, everybody. If you have any questions, please just email us. Um, but thank you all for joining us. This was so much fun. Brandon, thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.